thought we would do a little harvesting today and I thought we would use some uh, travel guides and stuff. So I think, I think we're going to go through this one. This has got some pretty good stuff in it. But before I do that, I want to talk about your local visitor center. If you have one, not every town or area has one. But um, if you've got one, it might be worth going. This is the first place I've ever lived where I actually went to the visitor center. We've lived, you know, all kinds of different other cities, and I just never actually bothered going there because I wasn't visiting. I was living. Why would I go to the visitor center? Okay, that was an oversight on my part because um, I went down to Experience Fayetteville, and that is Fayetteville, Arkansas's uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau. So their job is basically to market the city and the events that are held here. They have a super cool place down on the uh, downtown square where you can go in, you can pick up brochures, you can buy souvenirs, and you can talk to people who actually know helpful things. So I went in and um, I actually asked the manager, you know, is is there ever a situation where you have like outdated publications that just end up going to the recycle bin when new ones come in? And she was like, um, yeah. <laughs> so we worked out a little arrangement and um, I'm gonna check with them on a regular basis about getting some of those outdated publications to use in my classes at the library because you know they're just full of great collage stuff. And uh, she kind of loaded me up before I left. And um, I did ask her, is it okay if I just, you know, grab one of each of the things that you have a lot of? And she said, absolutely. So if, you know, go to your visitor center and just say, hey, you know, don't, you don't have to be dishonest and pretend like you're visiting your own town. Just say, would it be okay if I took one of each of the things that you have a lot of to use in some art projects? And I'm willing to bet they're going to say yes. Because, um they get a lot of stuff in and have a lot of stuff to put out. And I, I think there's a lot of situations where they have more than they can give away. So check your local place if you've got one. And I found some really cool stuff that I wasn't expecting. I knew I would find some brochures and some of those magazines that you find on the little newsstands like outside restaurants. They have the free regional magazines. I always grab those. Um, so I expected those and then the, the travel guides, but they had actually some cool things. They had, these caught my eye just because they were small and sweet. And it's for um, cyclists and motorcycle people. And it's a map, but look, look how it does. And then it does this, you know, and then it opens up and you've got the whole map thing. But I just want to alter this because it's like already this cute little book thing with this cover. And I, I just don't know what I'm going to do with these. <laughs> but I'm super excited about them. Look at them. So yeah, it folds out into a whole full map. And I don't want to do it because I'll never get it back like it's supposed to. But I was not expecting these. I was not expecting these little books. This is a pocket guide to Fayetteville. And look. It's like a little journal, y'all. I mean, it's got, you know, stuff to, to do in the city, where to go, you know, companies, places to visit, restaurants and things. But then it's got space for you to write in. It's a little journal. It is cute as can be. And then this one is the Arkansas State Parks Passport. And look at it. It's like pretending to be a passport where you can, it's got information about all the different state parks, and then when you visit, you can write about your visit. It's just another little journal. Look, a place for notes. How fun is that? I didn't know these things existed. Where have I been? This is the Fayetteville Ale Trail. A lot of craft beer places here. It's a thing. And this one, I was just drawn to the color and the whole design of the thing. Look at it. You could just do all kinds of like collage, some vintage stuff in here because the colors are already perfect for that. So yeah, 
there's there's way cooler things there than I thought there would be. I ended up bringing home a whole box of these, which I I mean, just the book them itself has got tons of colorful pages and images, all kinds of stuff that can be cut out or used for paper beads and paper tubes. So there's that aspect of it, but also the size. It just makes me want to make a little altered book out of it, you know, like a little collage book or something. It's got sturdy covers and then nice coated pages. So yeah, this is the Arkansas Cycling Guide. And then there were brochures for like events coming up for um, places like your local performing arts center. And look at that's just fun. Super fun. And then there's another, this is another one for the art center. If you have a performing arts center or like community theater place, chances are they're going to put out some kind of a cool brochure that you can find interesting stuff in. Um, this is another theater place, which I could just turn that into a book. I found. <laughs> I found more free scout guides. I really hesitated to even show you this because I'm starting to feel really guilty when I find them because I know that a lot of you have trouble finding these for free. <laughs> and I feel bad that every time I leave my house, I find one. <laughs> Obviously, I don't feel bad enough not to tell you about it. But I'm just saying, if, if you live in a region where they're done, they they might be out there. Don't give up. <laughs> So yeah, found that at my local visitor center. There's another place you can check. Um, brochures, you know, I mean, that's just cool right there. This is about our library. Look how pretty. It's just something colorful. And then these are some of the um, travel guides that I found at, at Experience Fayetteville. Um, Cityscapes, this is one of those things that comes out uh, monthly, I believe. And there's always cool pictures in here to use. And it's, I think it's regional. Yes, for Northwest Arkansas. So you may have the same magazine or something similar for your region that you're in. And Brides, this is Arkansas Bride Magazine, and I always like bridal magazines because there's usually pretty stuff in them. I mean, there's always pictures of brides that are just lovely. Um, I cut out bride pictures all the time. Ugh! <laughs> Look at that! I am ripping this whole page out, and I'm probably just going to hoard it for a while because dang, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. Bridal magazines, so they can be pricey. I get it. They can be pricey. I did not know that there were um, free bridal magazines to be had at your local visitor center. I, I did not know. So now that I know, yes, I already have an arrangement to visit there about once a month to um, see if there's anything headed for their recycle bin that I might could use. So... Hopefully I'll be able to nab some more of these. But this is another Weddings in Arkansas. So that's very cool. This is At Home in Arkansas. And this is more about um, home decor and things. Oh, I'm glad. Is that a Christmas tree? It was, oh, yeah. See, I want to save. I've got, my classes are at the end of the year, so I should be able to collect a little something for each holiday. <laughs> so that, yeah, by the end of the year, um, if someone wants to make a Christmas, you know, like a December daily or, or whatever, I will have things for them. So these are fun. This is AY About You, Arkansas's Lifestyle Magazine. So, this is about lifestyles. Okay, true confession, I rarely read a lot of the magazines that I collect. I usually just scour the pictures. However, if a picture does grab my attention, sometimes I will read the article. But it's always the picture first, <laughs> article second. So now you know. 
Um, this is a fabulous one. I have actually already harvested one of these and I was super excited to find another one because this is a local magazine and this is the visual arts issue. Okay, true confession, I don't really know what all they do on a monthly basis. Um, I don't know if it's about art every time or something like that. But I know if y'all know Sheila Curtis, who is, you know, she's an artist, mixed media gal, she's out there. And I think it's her nephew, I need that whole page right there. I think it's her nephew who is the um, editor of this magazine. And she actually has a piece in here somewhere. One of these pages, Sheila's got a a piece. I know because I cut her thing out when I ran across it the first time, but I don't... Wait, was that her? Yes! She's got a couple of uh, mixed media pieces in this issue, which is awesome. So, shout out to Sheila, who goes by, like, I don't know, 12 different names. Artie Gras, and Sheila, and Shelly, and Shell, and I'm amazed that I can even keep them straight because usually when someone online has more than one name, oh, I'm screwed. I can never remember that that they're the same person. But for some reason, I've managed to keep up with, with her. So, um, don't know if your area might have something similar to this, but worth taking a look. And then this is Celebrate Arkansas. I have no clue what this one is about, but the cover is that good kind of weirdly smooth paper and the pages are nice and it has happy people in it so I grabbed it. Yeah. So let's let's harvest one and I picked that um, travel guide. This is for Hot Springs. I got this there at the Visitor Center. They have not just stuff for Fayetteville and Northwest Arkansas, but other kind of major um, areas that have attractions as well. So I picked this one up, and what I've been doing here's my here's my harvesting eye these days because this is this is what I'm needing. I am looking for full bleed pages printed like this you know, where there's no white border. I don't need these white border full pages. But ones like this, I look at these to see if they would be good for either paper beads or paper tubes. And for the paper beads, I like them to have a good variety of kind of bright colors. This one I can already tell you is too dark. It's got this kind of, it's like a dark gray and all this dark right here, it's too much dark, and that's not really what I want. I have quite a few dark beads, and I'm kind of looking for lighter ones, so I am not going to save this for my paper beads. So do I want it for paper tubes? Paper tubes, only the edge, about an inch of the edge shows. So I look at the top and the bottom to see if there's anything interesting that I like about those that I want to show on my paper tubes. Well, not really. Again, I don't really need the dark gray color. This doesn't excite me. So this poor page does not get selected for paper beads or paper tubes. So, is there anything I want on here as far as an image? Because I am cutting out images for collage and saving, and I'm also cutting out words. So I kind of look and see, okay, refresh, revive, reset. Mm, it could be, but no, it doesn't excite me. None of the pictures are really doing it for me. This is actually, this is kind of cool. Oh, I remember this. This is one of the bathhouses. Do they call, they don't call them bathhouses anymore. They call them spas. They're all spas. They're in hot springs. Um, yeah, nothing is really exciting me on this page. Same for the cover. I check that too. So I just go through here and that's kind of what I do. Now this one, paper beads. Not really because it's mostly a lot of muted colors and I actually have a ton of blue. Paper tubes. It's only going to be, you know, about an inch of the top or bottom that's going to show. And I actually like this bright blue. 
that would make a lovely paper tube. So I'm going to pull this out. And for the tubes, you know, sometimes they're solid colors, sometimes it's a print. I don't care which one. It just has to be something I like and that's interesting, or it has to be red. <laughs> My mother wants me to make her one of my paper tube boxes, but she wants it solid red. I told her I'm happy to do that if she can wait, you know, maybe a year because it will take me that long to collect red tubes. So anytime I see an edge that has any shade of red on it, I cut it out and I roll it up for her box. And this is all I've got saved up so far. And I'm going to need probably 150 of these tubes. <laughs> so it's going to be a while. But I got you, Mama. I'll get it done. <laughs> so, yeah, I like this. I'm going to save it for the um, edge there for tubes. Going on. Oh, okay. This one, there's a lot going on here. This section right here does not appeal to me. It's dark. It has a little bit of contrast, but there's just not much. So it's going to be a basically, for a paper bead, it's going to be kind of dark with a tiny little bit of white here and there, and that just doesn't thrill me. This would make a gorgeous paper bead. This would make a gorgeous paper bead, and that's because there is some light and dark and purple. I don't find a whole lot of purple in magazine ads. I, I don't know why. You know, you'll find some here and there, but there's just not a lot of bright pink and purple. So I always grab those when I can. There's a ton of blue and red, um, yellow, kind of, sort of, green, a lot of green. But yeah, purple and pinks I always grab. So I'm going to use this for beads, and I'm going to use this for beads. And this one right here, even though it's dark, the dark blue, see those little, those little lights right there? Those are going to show when I roll it into a tube. So I may use this section for the tube, this for beads, that for nothing. So I'm going to pull these out. And this is a staple bound. So yeah, it's, you know, oh, see, that would be good too. This part that I don't use here on this side, I will definitely use over here for either beads or tubes, either one. So, I'll, yeah, I'll make good use of that section that I didn't like. And I don't worry about really messing up the edges because these are all going to get trimmed. I will say that for the paper beads I'm making now, I'm not using a, you know, the slatty paper trimmer like we all have, you know, you know that one. I'm not using it because after about four slides on a brand new blade, that's about all you're going to get for clean cuts. Those things dull so fast. And then when you make a cut, it'll make, you know, it'll make a perfectly straight, awesome cut. But you look at it close and the edges are just slightly hairy, kind of fuzzy because, you know, the blade wasn't just super sharp. And I don't want that for these beads. These are my beads that are going to be part of Audrey's dress. And that's just not what I want. I'm a little fussier about them. So I take them and put them on a, I have a large cutting mat, straight edge, and a rotary cutter. And I'm cutting all of my beads with a rotary cutter. And so I get none of the hairy edges. Um, I get nice, sharp, clean cuts. So that's what I'll be doing with these. Now for the tubes, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about hairy edges. That's fine. I'll just use my slidey uh, paper trimmer to cut those. Something's going to fall over here. Okay. These are too dark for beads. Uh, the part that goes all the way to the edge for tubes is just not exciting me. Same here. Same here. I don't see any words or images. I don't know. I may, there's like a person on a bicycle without any commentary. I might cut that out because there may be people in my classes who are cyclists. I could do that. There may be Al Capone fans. <laughs> I could cut him out. I might go through and cut out some of these circles. But I don't want to commit to any at this moment. 
Um, this one is good for tubes. It's got a nice bright blue. These that have just the, a page full of advertisements are sometimes um, really good. I've got one. Okay, this one you can see it just had, it's mainly blue, but it had a whole bunch of these little squares of just little advertisements. So I went ahead and cut that for beads because what those little advertisements do, you know, even though they weren't really exciting to look at, there was a lot of color in there. And this is the beads that I got from it. And I love the, um, can you see all the different colors in there? And how they do? Yeah, I love that look. I actually prefer this over a solid color because this is just fun and interesting and better to look at for my eyes. So yeah, that's what I kind of look for in these kinds of pages. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily like a beautiful, awesome image. Just help your eyes to look at the overall color of them. This would be a little bit dark up here, but like this little section right here, this little section right here, that would make really cool beads. And that's not what I want to do with it, though. I have, I have to decide front or back, and I want this because I like that blue. Um, I could cut out those kids because they look like that they're happy. Field of dreams, I don't know, maybe, maybe some sports enthusiast might use that. See, I'm trying to think of words and phrases that would be appropriate for like a journal page or a canvas or a card or something. And I have to try to think outside of my own style and interests <laughs> you know because I tend to just look for things that appeal to me <laughs> and I have to remember that <laughs> I'm not the only one. Oh, this is great this does not excite me but this does it it would probably make a weird bead because it's got kind of the muted colors and then this bright and I'm all about weird so I'm gonna pull that out for beads this, there's just it's a lot of green and blue that I have a ton of. So, yeah, that doesn't really appeal to me. Um, okay, this kind of yellow gold color, it's only on one end, and that's okay. It's the only end I need for paper tubes. So I think, yep, I'm going to go ahead and pull those for tubes. Adventure is calling. I might cut this out, but the way it's positioned over this guy's head, like his ear is right there. There would be an ear. I would have to like really trim close and you could still tell there was a weird head and that just bothers me. I'm not, I'm not even bothering because, yeah, no. Oh, color, hello. Beads or tubes right here. This one, no. It's too dark and muted. Um, the edges are just still just kind of dark. So yeah, that doesn't excite me. Gloss right over that. Okay, this one, this will make some cool beads, even though it's kind of a boring page. But you look at the contrast, you know, here's the blue and then the yellow and the red and little bits of that are gonna show on the edges of the bead or on the edges of the layers of each bead because you know each each bead has all of these all of these layers as that you roll it around I can't tell if my camera is focusing in or not it really doesn't look like that it is but you'll just have to trust me um, yeah when you roll it it's uh, interestingness happens and I can I already know that that's going to be super interesting so I'm going to pull that one for beads. Uh, no, nothing there. It's got the white edges, so I don't need it for beads or for tubes. Now, I can cut off these white edges for beads, but y'all, I am making thousands of paper beads. That is too fussy for me to bother with. 
And I'm also using magazine pages about the same size, about the same paper weight, which means I'm going to get beads that are all about the same thickness. And if, you know, if I cut this down and make it smaller, my bead can possibly be a little bit thinner. And for, in most cases, it's not a big deal, especially for cutting off that tiny amount. But that's why I don't cut out smaller pieces to make beads from, because I need the bulk to make them fatter. I like a healthy bead. You know, it should have some meat on its bones. And because I'm making so many, I don't bother with the trimming. So that's all about that. Now this, this will definitely make a nice tube. And I'm thinking, even though this is a lot of white space, it's going to have green on either end. It's going to have green like in the, when I roll this up, this green is going to end up in the middle and it's going to end up on both ends. And then it's going to be white in between. That could be cool looking. So I'm going to pull this for beads and this for tubes, or at least one tube. Oh, some of the, that's kind of interesting, but see, this is in the way. No, I don't need that. Oh, this is like the ideal paper bead page. Look at all the purple and the yellow. <gasps> That's going to be so fun. Mine. These are, I don't know what these are, coupons or something, and they're on a different paper that I don't want. Okay, this one, I would definitely cut out the word art for um, tubes, yeah, no, not really. For beads, this would probably make some interesting beads. So I think what I'll do is pull this, I'll cut out the word art, and then I'll use this section for beads. Just, you know, purple. This one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull for tubes. For paper beads, there's going to be, you know, one part of it that's going to look kind of cool. This part will not. This is just to most landscapey looking things like this. Um, trees and grass and water. They just, there's not enough contrast to, for them to really show up. They're not bright enough. But this would be really pretty. And I don't mind words on the ends of my tubes. And I do like the color. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that. Um, I don't think I need that. <sighs> well, see, bothers me when they put like a little, they ruin the picture by layer. No, these are not layered. You can cut between them, but they're funny shaped. But then they put something over it and it just kind of messes with my chi and I, I don't want it. I reject it. This would actually make some kind of cool tubes. I'm kind of liking that edge right there. None of this will show, so I'm going to pull that for tubes. This could be cool for tubes. I don't want that black. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't need solid black, or do I? Because that is a really dark, nice black. Oh, fine, fine, I'll take a black one. You just never know. Somebody might say, I want you to make me a solid black box, and then I will think of that page and have regrets. I think there's enough red there to get at least one tube for my mother's red box. <laughs> I'll take any red I can get. Oh, that's kind of nice. Mm, I'm going to cut out those two. Those are nature-y. I could cut it off right here so that it's a rectangle. And then that's, that's, okay, I need those images. Keep 
that one. This can go tubes or beads. When I can't decide, I cut it in half, <laughs> make half of it tubes, half of it beads. Cut that out. That's fun. Some of them just look way too advertisement-ish. And I, yeah, they just don't do it for me. This is way too, you know. Everyone look at the camera and smile because we're doing an advertisement. No, I don't want that. He's kind of sweet. Look at him with his fish. I want him. Okay. This one, no, mm, too much dark green. Not seeing any pictures or words that speak to me. And I'm, see, I'm not really a nature person. A lot of people are nature people. I may have to go and look through this one more time to make sure that I'm not giving up on a uh, nature photo that someone else would like. Uh, it's a constant reminder that I'm not picking out just for me. That's going to be about it, I think. Yeah. That's not too bad. Okay, this paper is thick which might cause a problem for my beads. You know, because I don't want any super fat. But I won't know till I try. Oh. Well, I don't like that white. That white won't work. Okay, I'm going to pull this just to see what happens. So, that is some of the goodness that I found in this little magazine. I pulled a lot of pages, y'all. And then I may... See, that's not bad. I may go through and pull some more of these, like I said, that I've just passed over because they don't appeal to me because I forgot this is not all about me. Now, once I'm done, and this is all I have left, I save a stack of these to use for gluing because, you know, like when you're gluing, you're rolling up a tube or whatever, and you have to put the little glue on this end, and then I use a glue stick, which I don't have in front of me, so we'll pretend this is a glue stick, and then you do this, you need something for your excess glue. So I save these, that way this gets gluey, I rip it off, throw it away, and then I've got a clean one, and yeah. So that works really well, and then, you know, if I get too many collected, and I don't need that many to save for gluing, then I make sure they go in my recycle bin. So that is where I'm at with all of these. Here's some that I got out of another magazine. Um, when I pull them for the ends, you know, these are for the tubes. So pulled those, you know, coveted purple, red for mama. And then this was a page, this was one of the travel guides, and I just pulled that whole stinking page because it's awesome extremely awesome see this this would be kind of awesome too for uh, this would make actually good beads but I like this better so I'm just gonna I'll probably hoard that for a while so there are my um, or that's my explanation of my thinking for um, harvesting magazines particularly travel guides do you want me to go ahead and finish these out and then show you what I end up with? Let me do that. I'll go ahead and go through these and cut out what I plan to cut out. You know, make the beads out of them, make the tubes out of them, and then I can show you what I got out of that one little staple bound guide. Let's do that. All right, I will be back. So here's what I ended up with out of that one little staple bound travel brochure. Um, I ended up cutting these words out and just cut them apart because I thought, you know, individually they kind of made more sense than together for me anyway. 
So I got a couple more words, and then I got a bunch of just happy um, kids and family pictures and folks doing stuff, you know, outdoors. So, yeah, lots of just happy pictures. Oh, and Al Capone. <laughs> happy kids and Al Capone. <laughs> All out of that one magazine. I got quite a few tubes rolled up, um, mostly blues and greens because, you know, the whole nature aspect of the brochure, but it made some great tubes, and then fabulous beads, so you can, may even be able to recognize some of the pages that we looked at in these beads, you know, some of them had the bright yellow on it and purple. So you can see that they just, yeah, they rolled up beautifully. Yeah, I was real happy with the beads that I got out of this harvest. So that is it. That just gives you an idea of what I'm looking for in my um, magazines and publications right now and then what I'm doing with them. Um, well, <laughs> sort of. This is not the finished product of what I'm doing with them, but, you know, it's a step toward getting there. So that's all I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for hanging with me, y'all. That's it. The end.